Hello, hello, flower friends. I'm Jessica with Sierra Flower Farm, and welcome to 5 Minute Flower Friday, where you can find almost everything you need to know to grow, harvest, and design with all the different types of fluffy beauties in five minutes or under. Today, we are talking all about anemones, and I couldn't be more excited to share this delightful spring focal flower with you. Anemones have gorgeous, large, single peony-like petals, but their prominent center is really what makes these flowers so unique, especially the ones with a darker center. Anemones, unlike a flower farmer, know when to call it a day as they fold their petals in for a snooze once it gets dark or even on a cooler day. Aside from their beauty, anemones are tough, and out of the many spring flowers we grow seem to handle our high desert, crazy weather fluctuations the best. Some of my favorite colors include pink, grape, and white with black centers, which brides adore. To be honest though, I will take as many of these as I can get my hands on in spring in whatever color I can, since they are not only stunning, but also prolific even under the harsh spring weather conditions. I can't stress enough the value in being able to get early spring focal flowers that are grown as annuals. Now that we've sold you on growing anemones, let's jump into all the nitty gritty information. Anemones are commonly started from corms. Corms will produce the more premium flowers you see splattered on social media, guaranteeing the same consistency and color, size, and form of the mother plant, and takes about three months for the plants to start producing blooms. Anemones can be grown from seed. It may be a little trickier to get them germinated and producing, but could be fun to experiment with or build up your own corm stockpile. When purchasing corms, there are various sizes to choose from. In general, the larger the size corm, the more robust the plant. Typically, you don't want to go below a size 3-4. The corms will come to you looking like dehydrated acorns since they are sent dormant until you decide it's time to break that dormancy. You wake up anemones by plumping them up. This is done by soaking the corms in water for about three to four hours. There are many different methods to do this, but water and time is consistent across all of them. From soaking, you can plant the corms out directly into their prepared growing beds, or you can take one additional step and pre-sprout the corms in a substrate under ideal conditions which is dark and cool at about 45 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit, and grow them until the roots are a minimum one inch long and then plant out. Just keep in mind, this additional step will take a week or two. To get more details on the soaking and pre-sprouting processes, check out the links below. Anemones will stay in peak production for about three to four weeks, then they start getting tuckered out. To keep the best product, you can succession plant anemones in fall through early spring in three to four week intervals. Your succession start date and subsequent plantings will depend on your growing climate and infant structure. In terms of spacing, anemones can be planted fairly close, anywhere from four to nine inches. We have found the sweet spot for us to be seven by seven inches, where they get enough elbow room so they are not overcrowded, but still close enough to create healthy competition for better stem length. Anemones are fairly tough when it comes to cold weather, but do best with a little help. Micro tunnels, double low tunnels, or high tunnels during the winter and early spring months help to keep the anemone's feet from getting soggy and frost nipped. Depending on your growing climate and infant structure, you can have anemones begin producing in late winter through late spring or even early summer. Unlike ranunculus, the heat and day length doesn't shut these guys down quite as easily, but the anemones would also appreciate shade cloth on hot days above 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Anemones will tell you when they've had enough when you start seeing inferior flowers and yellowing of plants signaling they are putting energy back into their corns. Anemones are hungry, properly prepared soil with slow release fertilizer and a regular feeding of your preferred fertilizer will make them happy. Watch out for splitting stems, which can be caused by inconsistent watering and calcium deficiencies. Anemones are also prone to certain fungi, which can lead to rot. Some other battles with anemones are pesky aphids and thrips. They both love anemones. Lastly, water droplets, wind, and those darn thrips can cause significant browning on the delicate petals. To determine when an anemone is ready to harvest, a typical rule of thumb is that the flower has opened during the day and closed during the night at least one to three times. Another way to check is to look at the distance between the anemone's flower head and its collar. What a dog. 
proper flower to have a collar. Anyways, you want the distance between the flower head and collar to be at least a quarter inch. The greater the distance, the more aged the flower is. Much past a half an inch to an inch, the flower is no longer in its prime, especially for those kitchen table-like products or long-term storage. To harvest anemones, you are going to take your clippers or harvesting knife and cut down to the ground. Optimal time to harvest anemones is early in the morning when the plants are nicely hydrated and full of those yummy carbohydrates. In the peak of the season, you will need a good harvesting daily or every other day. Anemones aren't too picky when it comes to post-harvesting care, but in the least, be sure to place harvested stems in a clean bucket with a chlorine tablet. We use Crisol CVBN tablets. When filling your harvesting bucket, you don't want to have the water level covering the entirety of the stem. Doing so has a tendency to make the stems mushy. Instead, have your water levels about two to three inches up the stem. Anemones do great in the cooler, but before placing them in there, make sure flower heads don't have any moisture. Store them at 38 to 40 degrees Fahrenheit. They can store well for two to five days. However, if you don't have a cooler, keep them in a cool dark room and move them after the first 24 hours of harvesting. Anemones are ethylene sensitive, so beware of that when storing. Anemones have a fantastic vase life when harvested at the appropriate stage. Expect five to seven days vase life, if not longer. Anemones can be used as a focal flower or a disc component, a popular flower to use in wedding work, but equally beautiful in mixed bouquets. Finally, anemones also appreciate commercial flower food. I recommend supplying that to your customers or to add it into your arrangements as well. Well, there you have it. Almost everything you need to know about anemones in five minutes or under. Anemones go beautifully with many of the spring blooms, tend to bloom earlier than ranunculus, and last longer in the field with less fuss. Not to mention, they sure perform in the vase, opening during the day and closing at night. It is a hoot to watch and your customers will appreciate their performance. Until next time, we are looking forward to helping you hand bloom soon.